In this demo, I will show you how the email notifications work in Jenkins. So here I am again in my Jenkins dashboard. And I'm going to go to manage Jenkins and I'm going to go to manage plugins because we need a new plugin. If you have chosen when you were installing Jenkins, install me the recommended plugins, then this plugin that I'm looking for will already be installed. I'm looking for this one, the email extension plugin. This plugin is a replacement for Jenkins email publisher. You can use the built-in Jenkins email publisher or you can use the email extension plugin. The email extension plugin just gives you some extra features. This plugin here is already installed because when I installed Jenkins, I said install me the recommended ones. And this is one of the recommended ones. If this is not installed for you yet, then just go to available plugins, type email here, and then you will see that same plugin in the list here. And you click download now and install after restart to install it. Then this plugin needs to be configured. So we go back to manage Jenkins. We can go to configure system. And here we can then configure this extended email notification. Here you also have the normal email notification. So if you rather would use this one, then you can also configure this one. So this is the standard Jenkins email notification and this is the extended email notification. To test this email notification, just if you want to test it, if you don't want to use it in production, then I would suggest you to use a tool mailtrap.io. Email testing for dev teams. You can open a free account here. Then you have 50 messages that you can get. And this is the tool that I'm going to use. I will just put the SMTP service of Mailtrap and I will get all the emails in Mailtrap. That's an easy way to show you how this works. I already configured Mailtrap here. So what you have to do to configure the emails is you have to configure an SMTP server. What your SMTP server is, I cannot tell. You have to configure an SMTP server. You could use Gmail SMTP server. You could use your mail server of your company. You could set up your own mail server, or you could use something like Mailtrap if it's just for testing. I'm going to use Mailtrap. What do I need for Mailtrap? I need the SMTP server, SMTP, SMTP mailtrap.io, and I need to configure SMTP authentication. I need a username and a password. And then the email will be sent to my mailtrap account. So this is just an SMTP server. An SMTP server is just a server that can send email normally. Mailtrap just gathers the email, but what an email server normally does is it is a server that will then just send email. If you're on Amazon, have a look at the Amazon Simple Email Service, which also provides SMTP services. So this is to configure the extended email notification. So now we have an email server, a login, a password. Now we can create a job that will email us when the build fails. Let's go to my GitHub repository, the Jenkins course. And here I have a folder email notifications. And this is the Jenkins file that I'm going to run in a new pipeline job. So I'm going to use pipelines and I'm going to use email notifications in Jenkins pipelines. This is the Jenkins file that I'll be using. So I'm going to check out this Jenkins course repository. I'm going to say to Jenkins, my Jenkins file is in email notifications slash Jenkins. And then Jenkins is going to interpret this file and run it. Let's have a look at my stages first. So I have two stages here. My first stage is built and it just prints so far so good. And then I have a stage test. It says a test has been failed and I'm going to execute exit one. Exit one means that an error has occurred and Jenkins will actually stop executing. When it stops executing, we want to make sure that we're going to execute some code to email us. So if this was our normal test, npm test or sbt test, maven test, and it fails, we want to catch the error and we want to email the developer. We want to email maybe always one person, the manager. 
and we maybe want to email the person that started the job if the job was started manually. That's why we use a try and catch mechanism. So we're going to try to execute this code. And if something fails, like I'm triggering here a fail manually, then this catch block will be executed. This whole catch block will be executed. This E is a variable with error. So at the, at the end, we're still going to throw this error, but then in between, we are going to send an email. So let's go over the code to send the email. We do a try, something failed. We are now in the catch. What should happen in this catch? First, we're going to mark the build as failed. So we say the current build dot result is a failure. Now Jenkins knows the build is failed. Because we are catching it, we could do whatever we want with error. We could say, oh, this error is actually not that important. We're not going to fail the build. We're just going to continue doing something else. In this case, we're going to say if an error occurs, then the build needs to be failed. Then we're going to set some variables. We're going to say the subject is going to have the job name, just text the build, then the number of the build, and then the result. The result will be failure. The content is going to be a jelly script. That's why we are going to use this email extension plugin because then we get some nice HTML output. So this plugin can give you some more information in email. It can give you an HTML email with some more information, more information that the standard email code gives you in Jenkins. And it will be much more useful when you get the email and you see a lot more information. Then we're going to send the email and then we're going to check if our two variable is defined and not empty, then we're going to send the email. This two variable is defined right here on top. And it just says that the email recipients are going to be those three. And those email recipients are going to be maybe your manager, some predefined email addresses that always need to be notified when a build fails. The developer that did the commit, so the developer that made the changes or multiple developers that made commits that made the changes, they need to be notified. And the requester, so if the job was executed manually, then the requester should also get an email. So that's defined in this two variable. And then here we're going to check whether this is not empty so that if there are no email addresses in this list, then we're not going to send an email. If there are, then we're going to execute this piece of code. We're going to use the email extension plugin. The body is going to be content, which is this HTML template. My type is going to be text HTML. So it's going to be in the text HTML format. The reply to will be the default reply to, which you can actually set here in the configuration. It's right here, the reply to list. So this value will be available as the default reply to in the project configuration. So here we are using this default reply to. I didn't really enter here anything, but you can enter something and then you have a nice from address when an email has been sent. We're going to say the subject is the subject variable. The to is the list of email addresses where we want to send to. And we can also attach a log. And at the end, we're just going to throw the error to stop the execution of the script. So let's, let's try and execute this pipeline. So I'm going to make a new item, new job. I'm going to say email test, it's going to be pipeline job, press OK. It's going to be a pipeline script from SEM. The SEM is Git. Repository is my Jenkins course. And I'm going to say my Jenkins file is in the email notifications folder. And what I also want, what I discussed in the previous lecture, I want to pull the SEM. So you can pull the SEM and you can say, here's the explanation. You can say, for instance, every 15 minutes or every five minutes, you can pull the SEM. And then if there's a new commit, then it will automatically build. So here's the explanation. If you read this, then you will understand what exactly the syntax is that you have to use to pull the SEM at certain time intervals. So this is, if you say H slash, and then the number just every 
in this case, five minutes. I'm going to save. I'm going to build this. And if everything goes correct, this build should fail. Yes, and it has failed. Let's have a look. So a test has failed. This is this stage, a test has failed. Then we have the exit one right here. And then our build has failed. It's going to go to the catch and it says sending an email to this email address. And this is the email address of my user because I started it, started by Edward. And my email is configured here. And then it has finished as a failure. So let's have a look at MailTrap. I have a Jenkins inbox and I have here a build failure of a minute ago. Project email test, duration 1.4 seconds. And you can see the console output is right here. Start a job by user Edward and then exit one. And then at that point, the email has been sent. There's also an attachment of the build log, which is the log of the build. There's a build URL, so you can just click here to be redirected to this screen. So this is very useful. So this is very useful for developers to then see this build has failed. They just click on this URL, they see why, or they can see it from the console output immediately. They don't even have to go to Jenkins and they can just immediately start fixing the bug. So this is actually very powerful, very simple, but very powerful. The from address not yet configured. So you can configure that in the settings if you want to. So this is an email. Nowadays, a lot of companies are using chat ops where you get the notifications in your chat channel, like Slack, for instance, or HipChat. So the next lecture I'm going to show you is kind of the same thing, but then using Slack, which is a team chat client that a lot of companies use. And you will then get the notifications in that chat channel rather than through email which can also be very useful.